Alright, welcome everybody to the... Uh, I always forget. Oh yeah, it's the 21th episode of the series here. And actually, the basic car in Box City is already done. Now we just want a motor for our car, because we cannot drive it yet. So let's go here and, and just fire this up for, I don't know, seeing what's going on. And we can already open the play screen and the car because we are going to edit those. So where is this application staying at? There it is. Alright, play and play again. So there's the nice little car, but unfortunately I can do whatever with my keyboard. I cannot drive this thing, so it's pretty useless. Um, now let's go into the car class and actually take care of that. So what we want to do, uh, we want to process input and based on that input we want to make the car drive. So the first thing that we want to do is usually we would implement the input processor and that's no, totally no problem, we can do that, but if we do this we have to implement all these unnecessary methods here. So I'm just lazy and I say um, since this class extends nothing um, I'll just let it extend uh, the input adapter which is nothing else but the input processor as a class so we can choose m which methods we want to override and what's uh, this? Oh yeah, terminate. Um, so we can choose which methods we want to override um, I just want to override the key down method. There it is, and the key up method. In both cases, we are going to return true as usual, and we'll also use a switch in case on the key code in both cases as well. So let's just set that up real quick. So, okay, um, what we would want to do uh, if the W key is pressed, we'd want to uh, drive the car forward, nicht, nicht brake, <laughs> uh, brake like this, and in case the S key is pressed, we want to move the car backwards. Um, Alright, so how do we actually get the car to move? Uh, you you do know how to apply forces and impulses on bodies, I talked about that in a previous episode, but that's not really how a car moves, that's more like a rocket. A car usually moves by, yeah, guess what, it turns its wheels. So the wheel joint is again awesome for this purpose, just as the name suggests. So um, a wheel joint definition doesn't just contain a revolute joint and a prismatic joint, it also contains some kind of motor actually and um, so what we want to do is we want to enable this motor uh, that's already included in the wheel joint so axis no what I'm doing left axis because this car has its motor on the back um, dot enable motor and that's it we just set this to true so the motor is turned on of course right now it doesn't really do anything because we didn't set the motor speed yet, which is going to be motor speed, a variable that we still need to create. Also left axis dot enable motor true down here and left axis dot set motor not motor talk. That is not what we want. No damn it. Uh ah, come on. Set motor speed to motor speed. So, of course, we don't set it to motor speed in both cases. Um, we actually have to put minus motor speed in the case that we want to drive forward. So, why that? Because motor speed is the speed with which the wheel turns itself. So, um, this is all going down to rotation, and rotation is negative in... Uh, let me think... 
in clockwise direction. Yeah, in clockwise direction it's negative, so we want to set uh, minus motor speed if we want to drive forward. So the only thing that we actually have left to do is to create this motor speed variable right now. So let's go up here and create a float called motor speed and set it to, I don't know, 50. 50 is good. Um, also, what we missed out is to be able to stop. So, in case keys.w or keys.s is pressed, um, we just want to set the motor to false. So, yeah, there's no motoring going on there anymore. Um, Alright, let's try this out. We're not going to be really satisfied, I can tell you that. Um, but anyway, we are just going to try it out. Just to see that we can absolutely still do nothing. Because we did not set the car as an input processor yet. It extends the in input adapter and therefore uh, implements the input processor, but isn't actually set as one yet. Here is GDX.set input processor and we set this new input adapter to it. But how do we actually get the car and the input adapter in the pro in the um, yeah in the input processor? Because we don't want to put the scrolled and this key down into the car. That makes no sense. So let's just take actually all of this and go after we create the car because we cannot set it as input processor then obviously. Um, and now we take this input adapter out and we have nothing in there. So what we want to do is we want to create a new input multiplexer which also as the name suggests um, gives input to multiple input processors. It itself is an input processor that just gives the input to the other input processors. Now we can put in the car. Actually let's do it like this. At first put in the input adapter and then the car. So why is that important in which um, come on in which uh, the order we do it because at first uh, it, it gives the input multiplexer gives the input to the input processor that it holds in the order they are added so at first this input adapter is going to get the input and then the car is going to get the input so why does that matter because we always say return true at the end of such a, uh, such an event handling method just because we are used to do it. But think about this for a second. The input goes in here and if we return true there is not going to be any input uh, for the car because as we can see if we hover over this uh, returns whether the input was processed. So in case we return true the input multiplexer thinks, oh, all right, this input was processed. I don't need to put to give it to the other input processors that I hold anymore. So the input stops right here. But we also want the car to receive it. So what we have to do is uh, we ha have to set this to return false. So in case a key is pressed, it goes to the input adapter in the key down method, then goes back to the input multiplexer, and then goes to the car. We could also add the car. Uh, uh, before we add the input, multipl uh, input adapter to the input multiplexer, but um, that would be kind of, I don't know, we would have to return true, uh, return false here then, but why would we do it if the other way is a little bit easier? So let's see what we did. We are still not satisfied because even though I can put input in there, because you see the car lights up, it's woken up, not a sleeping body anymore, uh, because we set the motor speed. The car is not actually moving, so we're setting the motor speed, but the car is not moving yet. Um, to do that, we forgot one thing, and that is, in the axis definition, we can set the max motor torque, which at the moment is zero. So. The, to the maximum torque of the motor now is zero, which of course isn't very much. Um, let's just set it to actually something like five. And you'll see the car starts driving and that is actually pretty slow, I just noticed. So let's say 50. 
And there we go, we can drive this car around. It's a little bit hard to control, but we can drive it. And yeah, really a great car. So at first, instead of just saying 50, we want to adjust this to actually the height, uh, the, not the height, the um, density of the chassis. So in case this is a really heavy car, we need more power in our wheels, in the motor. And in case this is a very light car, this power would be going to kick the car away and do whatnot. So let's just say uh, chassis fixture definition dot density, which is 5 again. And remember, 5 was way too low, so times 10. Should get us the exact same result. Yeah, right. Because in play, the fixture def that we give the car as chassis fixture def has a density of 5. Now, um, there's still one thing bugging, and that is the car goes up very easily when we start to drive. And that is actually because the wheels have uh, a lower uh, density than the chassis. So the chassis can easily pick up such a wheel and yeah, move it around. But in case the wheels would have higher density than the chassis, uh, it would be harder for the chassis to actually pick them up and do stuff with them. So we just want to set this to the exact same or maybe even times 1.5f. So now the wheels have a higher density than the chassis. And we see this looks way more realistic already. Um, the idea that the wheels have a higher density than the chassis is of course a little bit ridiculous but this is just a simulation and it looks ab ab um, absolutely fine. Just one thing that we notice is uh, the wheel here goes crazy while the wheel on the uh, other side is absolutely chilling and just moving how it should realistically. So this is an issue of this kind of car because the wheels are perfect circles so they just touch the ground in one very 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 small uh, point which of course cannot really have much friction because it's so small. This very small point even if the ground uh, has a friction of one and this is a friction of one still uh, needs to pull all the car uh, around. We could actually try to set the friction to I don't know 50, but I don't think this is going to work. Oh, damn it, it is going to work. Have a look at that. Very good. This is how our car is supposed to look, isn't it? Great. The wheels move the same way and everything. Actually, I just found that out. I didn't know that before, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, great. Uh, let's actually give this par car a little bit more power because it's still very uh, hard to get around. Let's say motor speed is going to be 100, but I think this is too much. Yeah, I think we should actually not increase motor speed, but the max motor torque. So let's say this is times 20 would also be going crazy maybe. Oh yeah, that's that's going way more crazy. So we have a lot of power right here, let's say 12.5F. Yeah, also still very crazy. So <laughs> I'm sticking with 10. Maybe increase the motor speed a little bit to 75. And that should be it. Alright, there we go. We have a car that we can drive around. Um, just one really small thing. We commented this line here out where we set the camera position, which we previously set to the box. Now we want to set it to the car. So we can say car dot get what? Nothing. Doesn't exist yet. We want to get the body of the chassis. So, oops. Come on, drive into the window. Uh, that body here is what we want to get and what we want to center the camera on. Uh, that's the chassis body that we created. So let's just go ahead and create a getter for this one. Actually, let's create the getters down there. And this is just going to be a get chassis method. 
really simple, just returns the chassis body of the car. So we can say car.getChassis.getPosition.x and car.getChassis.getPosition.y for the camera. Open this up again. And perfect. Nice car, which uh, the camera is following. And yeah, the brakes need some work maybe, but perfect. Oh yeah, the brakes need some work. But that's all up to your perf uh, personal preference. Just play around over the values a little bit until you get a result that's satisfying. That's just really a very basic car. You could also create actually crazy cars that use uh, bouncing wheels and what kind of stuff. But this is just a very basic car example for box 2 d So uh, have fun implementing this in whatever, your racing game, I don't know. Or create other structures with it. You could create, I don't know, whatever. I don't want to make this tutorial so super long and talk about stuff that nobody cares about. So uh, see you in the next tutorial and I hope you like this one. If you've got any questions uh, or if I was talking too fast or whatnot, um, just ask in the comments and I'll try my best to answer. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.